Welcome to GradCast, the official podcast of the Society of Graduate Students at the University of Western Ontario. And today, you know this is not a Wednesday, which means it's a special, because it's Valentine's Day, and we managed to find the school-leading expert on relationships and relationship psychology. So I want to give a warm welcome to almost Dr. Sarah C. Stanton here. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. How are you doing? Good. I'm excited to talk to you about stuff. <laughs> so Sarah's been on television and has been widely reported for her research. Could you tell us a little bit about what you do? Oh my gosh. Well, you're really, uh, you're really singing my praises here. I should have you write me left, uh, reference letters for job applications. Mm. That'd be great. Um, well, I kind of, I kind of dabble. I have my fingers in many relationship pies, but I guess what I've been getting the most attention for recently is some of my physiological work. Um, so I am one of those fluffy bunny type researchers that truly feels that like positive relationship experiences are among the most important things that happen to us and, and that um, and that love can save the day. Yes, I do. I do believe that um, to an extent. So I do a lot of work trying to show that that is true. <laughs> um, so if I were to, all right, if I were to ask you guys what you feel like stress means, what would you, what would you say? I feel like more like workload stuff, you know, like busy, you know, stuff like that. General baseline anxiety. So like bad stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stress yeah, yeah. Negative. bad. Negative. False. Okay. False, my okay. friend. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, it's a bit, that's a very particular form of stress. So there's, so the guy who actually came up with the term stress, distinguish between good stress and bad stress, or like euphoric stress versus distressing anxiety workload related stress. Um, so in some of my recent work, and for my master's thesis actually is the data that I'm talking about, um, I wanted to look at the other side. I wanted to see if relationships and thinking about the positive aspects of relationships and how much you love your partner might be an instance that triggers the kind of euphoric positive type of stress. Um, there's some existing work in the area. It hasn't ever linked the stress response with positive feelings, but the, all of the primes are like passionate love stuff and lots of ooey gooey, like fun, oh I love my partner so much things. So, uh, so there's reason to expect that maybe it would happen. Um, so I, I took blood samples from 183 people at Western and in the London community uh, and asked them to either think about their romantic partner, think about an opposite sex friend, or just think about their morning routine, so non-relationship thing. Um, and I found that only people who reflected on their romantic partner had a stress response, had an increase in glucose over time. Um, compared to the other two, and it was also associated with increases in positive affect, which is really cool. So it's kind of, I guess, the first real evidence that um, that stress related to love and relationships is actually good stress and not bad stress. And it's good for the body and everything. That is project now. <laughs> that will be my first grant. <laughs> Interesting. I don't, I don't know yet. I think that it probably could be good, but I don't have any data to speak to that yet. Can I just was bad? Thinking about your partner and being happy about it will make you die early or something. <laughs> that would be awful. Okay, well, here's why I think, okay, here's why I think it, it probably doesn't make you die. Um, <laughs> case A, positive emotions, like experiencing frequent positive emotions are linked with better health and, and a better resilience against stress and flu and like all kinds of stuff, right? Um, case two is that, at least in animal models, exposing somebody to acute stress kind of like primes their system to deal with it so that if you stress them out later, they're kind of inoculated. So if you have like these positive affect related increases in stress stuff, <laughs> just from thinking about your partner or like being in love with your partner, I think it should be a good thing. I mean, making out with your partner is associated with good stuff, usually, and, uh, and, and that's physiological. Well, there's all those <laughs> transmitters, right? It's true, yes. That would have been cool, actually, if I could have measured some of those in that one study, but I just have blood. 
So get in the blood? I don't know how these things work. Uh, you can, but the kind of analyses I was doing did not involve a nurse drawing blood from my participants or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, ongoing. So, what uh, what drew you towards relationship studies as a thing? <laughs> Relationships are really cool. <laughs> Um, I'm such a people watcher. I feel like most psychologists are people watchers, but I am definitely a people watcher. Um, and I just, I just remember always kind of being fascinated by the relationship dynamics of my friends, <laughs> especially when they were in what I, at the time, when I was young and immature and judgmental, would consider unhealthy, bad relationships. I'd be like, why is that? Like, why are you staying with this person? Wouldn't it be better if, like, he would just tell you he loved you or, you know, something, 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 back when I was immature and judgmental. <laughs> um, less so now. So, uh, so I kind of have just always been interested in it, and I was lucky enough in my undergrad to work a bit with Eli Finkel on some of his relationship-related research and the rest is, I guess, history. All right. <laughs> so one question kind of about your study. Did you factor for the cycles of relationships, like people who've been together for mm. three months or 30 years or something like that? Yeah. Okay, so we did. The, okay, the cool thing is we had a really wide range. Like, we had people who had been in relationships for months, and we had people who had been married for years and years and years. Um, so we, I get asked this all the time. So yes, we did control for um, that, for relationship length, and it doesn't make a difference. So Aww. that's actually even cool. Like you don't have to be in the giddy first few months of your relationship when everything is wonderful and exciting. Like you could be together for years and years and years, and if you think about your partner, you still get a little jolt of goodness. And so I guess if you're out there uh, listening, and if you're in a bad mood, Thinking about your your boo what makes you uh, can give you like kind of um, a bit of a spring in your step for the rest of the day or what? What's yeah. Um, or is it like a smaller thing? Like it's just like if you need to if you need to wake up a little bit. <laughs> Maybe a little of column A, a little of column B. Like it's not the amount of it's not the amount of like physical energy that you'll get from like pounding a Snickers, but um, but I but I mean it's enough to keep your levels stable, which actually is good because if you eat a bunch of Snickers, you'll yeah. Not you heard it here from Sarah Stanton that Snickers are more powerful than love. Mm. Oh, gosh. <laughs> well, it's not necessarily going to have a stress response. It'll just increase your glucose. I mean, I guess it, de it depends on how passionately in love with Snickers you are. Some people. You're a psychologist, so you're probably used to having your research twisted to fit a narrative storyline. It's true, and that's fine. <laughs> I just try to, just try to uh, backpedal whenever I need to. Mm-hmm. Another really cool thing is that through your graduate career, you're an actress too. Yes. How did, I, I, I just thought, it's like, how did you keep all that? How did you keep that all scaled and balanced? Oh, theater keeps me sane. <laughs> um, I, I think if I didn't have like a fun extracurricular thing to do, um, I would crash and burn probably. I would burn out, I think. Um, so I, I actually, I, I double majored in theater and psych in my undergrad, so theater has always been a big part of my life since I was, oh gosh, like eight. <laughs> um, so it's nice. It's a different set of people that you meet, and it's fun to like just forget about this, the distress and stuff associated with school sometimes and just have fun, you know, working with a really cool group of people and making some art. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So today, we're going to pretend, but today is the 14th of uh, February, yes. as far as these listeners know. <laughs> the real leading relationship expert at this school is my advisor, Lauren Campbell, and today's his birthday, so everybody, uh, everybody can wish him happy birthday. Is He's going to kill me for saying that. There's a relationship psychologist here whose name, whose birthday is on Valentine's Day. Yep. That is just special. Yep. If you want another fun fact, uh, there, my advisor, and there's one other co-author on this Energized by Love um, work that I have, and his last name is Loving. He is Dr. Loving. <laughs> wow. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, I guess since, like, you know, relationships are your game, you know the ins and outs on how they work, what do you think about days like this as maybe a healthier constructive thing? Because there's a lot of cynicism around Valentine's Day these mm -hmm. days. I don't know. What do you do? You think it's a good thing or a bad thing? I know it's not, not as a psychologist, but as like a person who knows a lot about relationships from your research. Uh, well, hmm. I'll 
I'll try to keep my own bias out of this as much as possible because I have never really been a big Valentine's Day person, but okay. So there's research, I guess, on both sides. There's research being like, Valentine's Day is really good opportunity to like reinforce intimacy in your relationship and show each other that you think you're special and it's like a nice excuse to like go do nice things. And there's other research being like, it puts a lot of pressure on people and if you like get your, per if you get your partner the wrong gift, it can spell doom and I think, um, I think that February is the month where the largest number of breakups occur out of every month in the year. I'm, uh, let, I can double check that, but I'm pretty sure that it, if it's not number one, it's definitely in the top three. I do recall that being true. It was something like, because um, they actually did it. I remember the study was done by data mining Facebook. <laughs> yeah. And they found that, that breakups happened in, t in two big things. One was February. Mm -hmm. But the biggest one was in September. Oh yes, right when you're transitioning out of your your summer fling. Uh -huh. But yeah. Or when you're coming back from university to, from somebody or I don't know. I think it's cute because of young data, but um, young people. It's possible. Young people on the Facebooks. It's possible, but so Valentine's Day can be a good thing, and Valentine's Day can also just put a lot of uh, bad stress on your relationship. <laughs> Sometimes I guess it depends on who you are and what your relationship with your partner is like. Any advice to how to? Make sure it turns out all right. <laughs> well, I don't know. I think that you should just show your partner that you think they're special every day, and make sure to say I love you and cuddle. Make sure to cuddle. Cuddle is so cuddling is so good. Cuddling is good for our relationship satisfaction. Cuddling is good for our health. Like just cuddle, especially after sex. Have you thought about a column called Ask Sarah? <laughs> that would be fun. Get on it. <laughs> I think that, I think that might be fun, but I want I wonder if I would offend people because I use a lot of slang and I swear a lot. I'm trying I'm I'm editing myself now. <laughs> this sounds like a way to make it better. And no worry, this is the internet. No one cares if you swear. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah, I think that could be fun. I'll think about it. We'll see. I, maybe once I'm Doctor Stanton, I'll uh I'll consider that more seriously. <laughs> It'd be because like you know, you got the expertise behind you. You got the personality. <laughs> You just got to get like the snarkiness out of the writing, you know? Yes, I, I guess. Although if, if people are looking for kind of a, a lay person friendly resource for uh, learning about relationships, they should check out, I'm totally plugging it, they should check out scienceofrelationships.com. Uh, I blog for them and they're fantastic. They have like cool infographs and they have really short, like easily digestible articles. Um, and Dr. Loving, incidentally, is one of the editors on that one, along with uh, Ben Lee and uh, Gary Lewandowski. So it's really good. So Indeed. until Ask Sarah exists, you can check out scienceforelationships.com. So what, um, so you write for them, what's that like? It's fun. Like, uh, what kind of schedule is that for? It's completely open. I write whatever I want, kind of whenever I want. Usually I just run the idea by them. They, um, so right now, I'm working on coming up with a bachelorette party game that's themed around relationship trivia. So that you have fun and you get drunk, as you do at bachelorette parties, but you also learn something about, you know, like penis size or whatever. <laughs> okay, um, And I also am going to write... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to write a, a kind of like a half joke article about how Whitney Bischoff, one of the contestants on the newest season of The American Bachelor, um, she has a very high-pitched voice. And uh, when women are ovulating or when they're very fertile, they tend to have a higher level of their voice. So I'm going to write a write an article about how she might be super fertile just because her baseline voice is so high-pitched. And hopefully I won't offend her because <laughs> she seems very nice from her edit on TV. <laughs> All right, another, another question. Um, so you have had a dream that a lot of graduate students probably wish would happen, and that is you've been, you've had your research not only in the news, but also on television news. Yeah, I've been really fortunate. How's that experience? What was the experience of uh, the City TV interview? What was that like? It was really cool. Um, Jan was so nice, and I was terribly, terribly nervous. Um, because I always kind of get nervous before speaking publicly about this type of stuff. I'm nervous coming here. Um, and it's like a bunch of friendly people. So uh, it was nice because she basically said, if you mess up, we can just re-record it. <laughs> um, uh, so that was good. And I, I didn't mess up, which was also good. Um, but no, it was fun. It was just walking around campus and, and talking about research, which is, which is fun, especially when you're passionate about it. Awesome. And I um, guess if I could ask one more question. Joe, do you have any questions? 
what what kind of advice would you give to somebody who's not currently in a relationship and that's looking to get into one, especially on today, which Ooh. is Valentine's Day? All right. Um, Okay, thing number one, if you're single, do not settle. I know there's the pressure there, right? Being single is frowned upon. That's ridiculous. It's better to be single than it is to be in a bad relationship. So don't just get in a relationship because you are worried about being single. It's not worth it, trust me. Um, and, uh, okay, so what advice do I have for somebody who wants to uh, make some moves today. Mm -hmm. um, be direct. Don't use like cheesy cute lines mm -hmm. like... No pickup you, lines. Yeah, right you've been running through my mind or like okay. whatever. What's that? What, how does that? I don't know how it goes. But it's terrible. You've been running through my mind. Oh day. yeah, there Why you go. Why do I know that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but I'm glad I wasn't the one who was like, oh yeah, all these pickup lines. But anyway, don't use... It's like, don't be like clever. Just be like, hi, how you doing? Okay. And just be direct and be like, I think you're cute. Can I get your number? Or okay. whatever. Honesty, the best policy? Uh, yeah. Or Direct like is really direct, direct too. Okay. I mean, I guess uh, I guess maybe you don't want to be so direct that you're like, "Sup, you're hot, want a bone?" But uh, <laughs> but I mean, so don't do that. Probably not. <laughs> okay. There isn't too much research on okay. that part yet, but okay. the uh, but the like direct. I think you're cool. Maybe we should hang out sometime. Route seems to be better than the pickup line route. Okay. Least. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, this could be a uh, this could be a really fun or a very hard day for single people. Yeah. Oh, I thought of one more actually. If that's okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, don't play hard to get. Doesn't work. Ooh. No. Mm -mm. I thought like with the whole what's it called like the whole study with the puppy when you are like what's, this? what's it called what's when this? you are inconsistent in whether or not you praise it uh -huh. or punish it okay. it like wants okay. to oh. suck up to you even more or something. I don't oh, remember. that's terrible. Okay, well there is some interesting research that suggests. Um, at least in a speed dating context, if you're playing hard to get because there are like other options around and Valentine's Day, like say you're at a bar and there are lots of like eligible people that you might want to get your Mac on with, like I mean, if somebody's playing hard to get, you'll just be like, all right, next. <laughs> so, True. so I mean, it doesn't. It tends to uh, backfire more often than it tends to work out in your favor. So I, I would not recommend playing hard to get. So this is more back to that direct thing. Just yeah. be direct and it's, you know, see yeah. where it goes. Okay. I wonder if that's a new thing. That's a new thing. A like, new thing? Like, I wonder, like, because now everyone's in a buyer's market, so, you know, you could, through an internet or through a public, like, a large urban center, there's a lot more potential, and so you can be a bit more choosy. Well, mm -hmm. like, I don't know if you live where our good host Tyson's from, which has... 200 people, you said? 200 people. <laughs> oh 200 people. That's so bitty. You might, uh, you might have to um, massage the data. Or look for a different town. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, oh, can I have one more? Uh, am, am I we, allowed? If please, I'm talking these too much, people, just let they me know. know. This yeah, is yeah, literally your interview. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. it's basically just another direct is best, okay. but um, we tend to feel like we're putting the vibe out a lot more than the object of our affection thinks we are. So I don't know if, if any of um, you listeners are Scrubs fans, but there's this one episode where Elliot thinks somebody is cute, and um, JD's like, oh, you should just, like, why don't you just go over and talk to him and, like, look at him, and, you know, maybe he's looking at you. And she gives it, like, two seconds, not even a second. She's like, flick, flick, and she's like, oh, my God, he didn't see me. Why isn't he looking at me? He does not like me. What's the matter? Oh, my God, I'm so worthless. And she, like, runs away. Um, <laughs> uh, it's hilarious. But also, um, that's a thing. Right? So if, if you're hanging out at a bar and you think someone's cute and you sneak a quick peek and they're like not looking back or anything, then you know, don't don't despair. They may not they may just not have seen it. <laughs> um, and if you're getting your flirt on and they're not picking up on it, just be direct, right? Like they don't always see the things that you think you're putting out. And sometimes they see too much. <laughs> Balance. Okay. It's a tricky game. <laughs> it Although, is a tricky game. I can imagine I don't know, I do you do much work in the courtship side of things? I know it's, it's, that's its own subfield entirely, it right? So It is. Um, I don't do too much work, but I know enough about it just from lecturing about it in various places and stuff. I guess actually a fun trick uh, would, would be um, to somehow get your object of affection physiologically aroused and I did not mean that in a dirty way. <laughs> uh, but like so when we're aroused, we tend to misattribute our physiological arousal to 
a person that we've met. So if we, uh, so if you're like leaving the gym and you meet someone and your heart rate's all going because you were running on the on the you know, treadmill or whatever, and then you meet somebody and, and they seem nice, you're more likely to be like, oh man, my heart rate's all going crazy and stuff. It must be because I think this person's cute and I want to get to know them. Mm. So, you know, maybe today's a good day to pick somebody up at the gym. Mm. I, don't, I don't know. Give me a try. Let me, give, give that a try and let me know how it goes. So pick up line, I like you, let's go jogging. Yeah. Um, there you go. Is that a pick up line? Uh, it is now. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, maybe that's just direct. Like, we're on the treadmill next to somebody on the treadmill. Or, no? Am I you're like, What's it called on the other side? You're like slowly scooting, like jumping from treadmill to treadmill, yeah, trying yeah. to feel off about it. Okay, so now we're making a romantic comedy film. Is that what? Is that the plan? Um, it could be. Nice. <laughs> Why are you a fan? No. <laughs> no, they pain me. It's just so unrealistic. Anyway. <laughs> Well, there's also that whole um, aspect of the psychology of courtship and relationships is that how much the love stories were told shape kind of our expectations. And yes! Do you know a bit about that? or I only know a bit. Um, I'm not super, super familiar with that part of the research, but I'm pretty sure what I do know basically is that it gives us unrealistic expectations, like Disney movies and stuff. Disney, Disney and Colin Firth ruined dating. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say um, Hugh Grant, probably unrealistic too, right? He's in he, he's, all, he's in all of the like weird romantic comedies, and he always has the role where like the relationship doesn't make any sense, like in Love Actually, where he's the prime minister of Britain and he like gets with his secretary and he's like, oh, this is my one true love, so of course it's totally fine if I like drive around town in like the skeezy part of town in my car with my with my like chauffeur and find this girl and make out with her at a pageant. That's not going to end poorly or like get on the news or anything. Like it's just it's completely. Uh, oh. so we should change that movie to love, not really. Ooh. Well, some of it is like real love. That's like the one romantic comedy that I actually quite like, except for that one storyline that makes no sense. All right, so. Um, <laughs> We're now energized by the love of the room. Yes, <laughs> there it is. Do you have anything uh, interesting you want to like talk about that's coming up in your own word? Like, um, I don't know, a Twitter, a blog, a, anything else that you do that you want the internet to know about? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I didn't have time to think. I guess not. I mean, I guess it, you can follow me on Twitter at Sarah C. Stanton if you want. I just post research-related stuff most of the time on how, like, hugging is good for your health and, you know, how sex is a good thing. Sex is good for your health, too. Unless it's bad sex, then it's not good for your health. Unless you're a guy. <laughs> if you're a guy, all sex is good. If you're a woman, it has to be good. Sex. Alrighty. Good. Anyway, on that note, well, enjoy your sex. You Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. <laughs> Play safe, and we'll see you guys all on Tuesday. Okay. That's all for this week. If you want to send us some feedback, or if you want to come on the show yourself, email us at gradcastradio at gmail.com. Be sure to hook us up on social media. On Twitter, we're at Gradcast Radio, and look up Gradcast Radio also on Facebook. If you want to subscribe to the podcast, the podcast is located at gradcast.podbean.com. And it's on iTunes. And while you're there, why don't you leave us a review? It really helps us out. We'll see you guys next week.